live. Hi, everybody. Today we're going to talk about ports, excursions, getting off the ship when it stops somewhere, all that stuff. So <laughs> stick with us. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Sunday evening. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. We're having a long weekend here in Canada and a uh, beautiful day weather-wise here. We it is Victoria Day weekend. We get a three-day weekend celebrating Queen Victoria's natural birthday. Mm -hmm. We've been celebrating this in Canada since 1845. Yeah. So there you go. So there you go. <laughs> yes, and we know that our neighbors to the south, typically sometimes their May long weekend falls the same as ours, but not this year. I think next year is They're Memorial Day. Yeah. Memorial Day weekend, yeah. yeah. But this year is next weekend, yeah. Yeah, so after tonight, we can go party. We can do whatever we want. We don't have to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of us are actually working on the long yeah, weekend. Yeah, I was just going to say, there might be somebody <laughs> that's doing a little bit of work this weekend, no? So yeah, so I'm looking a little more tan than usual because we've been outside doing stuff. It's been beautiful, sunny weather this long weekend here in Ontario. Yeah, trying to get all those spring projects underway and completed and setting stuff up. We've got to get everything done so when the cruising season starts in two weeks, we've got everything out of the way. In two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and starting in two weeks, we start cruising and we don't stop for until well, the group cruise. That's not true. <laughs> Pretty well. Wow. Well, we got breaks. Yes. But you're going to see. You made it sound like we're going to be on a cruise ship for the next six months. No, you're, we're not doing that, guys. You're going to see constant mm -hmm. vlog activity. So mm -hmm. in between now and then, we've got a few interesting uh, things coming up. Mm -hmm. We just had Suitcase Diaries number three with Ken on last week. If you didn't see that, go check that out. Yes. And uh, yeah, this week we got a couple interesting videos. We've been doing this travel vlogger thing through YouTube for a year now where we're having you know, the advertisements and the monetization. So we're going to do a couple of reveal videos and show you what it's like behind the scenes and how all this comes together when it comes to money mm. and vlogging. And some of you are very curious about how that works for us. So the work. see how much money we're losing doing this job. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, so that's all coming out in the next couple of weeks. But of course, we've got the Morella cruise in exactly two weeks today. Yes. So we're going to have some content about that. Excited about that. And we got a big announcement next week's live. So don't miss that one. Big, big announcement involving someone. So I'll let you just kind of think about that. But uh, yeah, plus that'll be kind of our launching to go on the Morello Cruise next week as well. Because after that, we won't be live anymore. We'll be on a real boat. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so it's going to be exciting. The next little while, we've got a whole bunch of stuff all coming up. So it's kind of the calm before the cruising storm. Things are getting busy, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> for sure. So... Yeah, so yeah, this week, watch for a few videos that are coming out, we hope. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> we have a busy filming schedule <laughs> on our long weekend, so yeah, that's the plan. And then for tonight, we are going to talk about ports. So some of you may have tuned in to talk about ports, excursions, and so forth, so we are going to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we're going to keep a little bit of formal. We'll go through and say hi to people. We'll throw in some comments here and there as they come up about different things. We'll talk about our strategies. Uh, if you've been watching our vlogs for the last, you know, year and a bit that we've been doing it you probably see that we're pretty uh frugal might be the good word to use that we don't spend a lot of money on excursions but we try to find a lot of fun whenever we can right you know when we returned from the cruise pause we were we didn't do a lot of stuff off the ship because it was just going to survive and get back to cruising but lately from europe on we've been doing all kinds of different things and showing you our style of getting off and kind of making our own fun so we're going to talk about how we come up with that because Sometimes it may seem like we're just kind of winging it, but sometimes there's a little bit of thought goes in before the winging of it. And sometimes we are winging it. <laughs> and sometimes we book an excursion. And sometimes we, do. we don't. And we'll talk about why we do that or don't do that and what situations we do that. Right. So we'll talk about all those strategies for ports. Yeah. And we'll see what all your questions are, comments, and maybe you'll teach us a few things or tell us about a few excursions that we must do. So, yeah. Yeah. R rule of thumb for us is, you know, if there's something we really want to do and the only way to do it is through an excursion, We'll pay the money if it's a once opportunity like paris is a good example for us that was kind of our way to do paris was an excursion that was safe and we, we'll talk more details about why that was safe mm -hmm. and then there's days where we go to cruise port like cozumel we've been there so many times that you know this is Canuck could sell real estate there we've been there so many times i feel like i could and we just kind of know what there is to do and we just kind of wing it and do our own thing so yeah we tend to get up to something different every time so that's nice yeah. when you're comfortable with a port you can sort of uh go and explore on your own and and uh just see what what the day brings and tonight's drink for those that are wondering oh is tequila with a bit of lime juice and water so it tastes a little bit like a margarita so 
starting to kind of get into that cruise vibe there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Cheers. Mm. Who are you cheersing with? I am. Here, I can cheers with my Ooh, water. Oh, you straight cheers. vodka. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, we'll go to the comments, questions. We'll say hi to people, and we'll just start rolling right. through, and then we'll start mixing in, talk about ports and strategies and answer questions and get your feedback. Let's just do it that way, and we'll go for it. All right. Does that work for you? Sure. We'll just throw this little... No, we'll take that off, because we're going to throw comments up there, right? Uh -huh. Yes. Awesome. The technology. Let's see if it works tonight for us. There we go. Colleen and Bob are here. Hi, from, from sunny Vancouver, just back from Alaska on Cottingsdam. Amazing. Hot and sunny every day. Love it. Wore shorts and t-shirts. People were in the pools, both pools every day. Service was outstanding everywhere. Maybe we should have booked the cabana now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, continuing on with their comment because it sort of goes on in oh, a yeah, few different there, posts. I'll continue their comment. It's almost we, it's an essay. Yeah. We <laughs> took White Pass Railway. Music was the best we've seen on a cruise ship. It made having the drink package extra fun. The dance troupe was fabulous. Standing ovation for their show, Humanity. That is my favorite one of their shows. We've seen that a few times. Remember that one? Yeah, I'm listening to the song in the back of my head that they end the show with. Okay, keep going. Oh, on more? to the next one. I, Click I, on the I next just, one. I to do more than Imagine Music on a yeah. cruise ship. Food was okay, but not great. Diving burgers. Cannonball is the best. I agree with that for sure. Crown Royal at every bar, Mr. Knuck. Loved the Grand Dutch Cafe for mm -hmm. sure. Us too. Wow, it sounds like they had a wonderful trip. Good. Mm -hmm. Nice. Great. We are looking forward to the Dutch Cafe. We are. Ooh, we're a couple months away still from Alaska, but that is what I'm thinking about most of all. Mm, the Dutch it's Cafe. Dutch Cafe first, Glacier second. Mm, I see. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Mm. White Pass Railway, 25th. <laughs> oh, don't. We've had so many comments this week, guys, saying since the last live when I said that we weren't doing the train that we had booked um, a whale watching excursion. We've had so many comments, I don't know, a dozen at least, saying you have to change your excursion and you have to um, do the train. So I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Still a couple months to decide. Yeah. Well. yeah. Although excursions these days, want to cut in a little segue um for cruise lines we've found ever since the cruise pods that they are booking up more than ever like yeah. we used to be able to kind of say we'll figure Last it out minute. yeah like get on the ship and decide what to book for an excursion people are planning a lot for their head yes days. if you want one that you really want to do through the ship you need to book it early because yeah. i find they are selling out more yeah. than ever before yes yeah for sure that's happened to us a few times we've waited too long yep. and we weren't able to book the ones that we wanted so and that never happened prior to COVID for us. No, We've no, always for had sure. really good luck. But no. it has happened since in the last year. Hi, from Northern California. Hi. We'll be on the Caribbean Princess next month. Oh, I love that ship. Wondering if you had any recommendations for freestyling in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is a wonderful place to freestyle, in my opinion. It's you you get off the ship, you're right in the old San Juan area, you turn left. You either go up the hill or go up the hill on the, either side to the left, right? Hill. And just explore. It's beautiful. There's lovely cobblestone uh, streets lined with all kinds of shops and restaurants. You can make your way over to the fort on that way. There's one street that's lined with umbrellas. It's just beautiful and fun to be there. Um, yeah, there is there is an option to not go up the hill. You go straight to the left and you go all the way down there and stay water level. Yeah. There's actually kind of a nice little palisade i would say it would describe it with little restaurants and yeah. a fountain and stuff there yeah exactly so that's an option that's kind of near the coast guard station is there yeah you can go to one of the forts straight up the hill and that's kind of the closest fort but it's way up the hill and there's the big fort that you see when you are coming into port or exiting leaving port um that's on the very tip that you can walk to that one as well that's within walking distance and if you walk from the cruise ship to that fort then it's fantastic scenery the whole way the umbrellas the old buildings the cobblestone yeah now what we did the very first time that we went to puerto rico was we just got off the ship and went to the taxi stand and we hired a, a tour we shared a, a minivan taxi with two other couples that we didn't know but they were on our ship they filled up a minivan full of us there were three couples so six people in our van and they brought us to their parliament buildings and to the fort and a few other historical spots and it was a couple hour tour it was very reasonably priced but i won't quote you the price because i'm not quite remember but i remember thinking it was a good deal so that was nice and easy and safe to do and it, then it just sort of gave us um 
a driving tour of a landscape once they dropped us back off the port. We just went and walked around on some of the places that we had driven by earlier that we wanted to take a second look at. Yeah. So that's an easy way to to explore Puerto yeah. Rico. If you get up and explore, definitely go farther than just the walkway by the port and the drugstore and the, like, yeah. there's a Margaritaville or something right there. Um, senior senior, senior frogs. frogs. So get past that and, yes. and you'll get to the real old San Juan. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, for so, sure. And one thing we've learned to do too is some of the food options, authentic uh, cuisine is fantastic. If you can yeah. try a mafado, you've got to try that. Yeah. It's kind of mushed, crushed plantain with chicken or, or different seasonings so and then gravy to yes sauce. so you can and we've if you really want to know about that then maybe contact us after the vlog and we've actually got a specific restaurant we would recommend that we love the food prices were great it was authentic it was all locals in there so that yeah you know you're at a good spot when it's all locals and not tourists yeah we'll have to look it up we we did write it down though hmm. all right moving on yeah dave is here from all the way across the uk oh good evening dave Mm -hmm. How to save money at ports? Don't visit them. Well, that's not very exciting or fun. <laughs> Hide the credit card from the wife. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. And you can some ports. You have the option if there's nothing you really want to do. Like, yeah. So, so we have a we have a couple strategies. Sometimes if there's something really extensive, we do a whole day, whatever it takes, we book it and do it. Mm -hmm. You know, everything from a resort that we go and have a resort day with drinks and pools and beach stuff. Yeah, generally if we're on a cruise where we don't have a drink package, yeah. we try to do that at least one day. Or going off to on a bus trip to Paris. You know, that's a whole day type of event. A lot of times what we'll do is kind of the explore on your own or do something very short, even if it's through a private company or the ship, in the morning. Yeah. Get back on the ship by lunchtime. And there's hardly anybody on the yeah. ship. So you have kind of run of the pools. You got you know, less busy food venues and bars. Yeah. So we do that a lot. And we come back on and have a really good time with the ship kind of to ourselves. So if you get off really early, the advantage is you can get back on early. Right. And so if you if you kind of wait and get off the ship later, then you're kind of with the, with the crowd both ways. Yeah, yeah exactly. So we're that, usually one of the first ones off. But then we're also usually one of the uh, quicker ones back on the ship. But yeah. that's just what we enjoy because we love the cruise so much. Yeah. Always, so. And if you have a, if you stop at a port, they actually have like an evening stop, for example. One of the fun things to do is just stay on the ship, let everybody get off and do a daytime thing, have an early dinner or something quick and get off in the evening. But you know, someone like Cosmo in the evening is way different than during yeah. the day. It's, yeah, it's a special experience. We've enjoyed doing that for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And, and if you, you know, that, kind of to Dave's point, maybe is, you know, just don't get off the ship. So you can also just have a ship day when everyone else leaves the ship. And that can be a lot of fun too. We've done that a few times when we've been to a port three or four or five times, like Belize, we did that. Yeah. On our last time we were in Belize, we didn't get off because we've been to Belize probably four times and yeah. we didn't feel like we wanted to do the tender ride in. Yeah. Yeah. Dave's not going to ask you a question, which is too bad because like, how are we ever going to figure out what ship to board coming back across from the UK if he doesn't tell us what it is? <laughs> It's the Sky Princess. I don't know. Can't remember. <laughs> Maybe it's September. <laughs> uh, Twenty degrees. Dave says that's about what it was here today. So the same yeah, weather yeah. in the UK as it is here. We yeah. Had a nice sunny day. Today. What, do you, what What's the right way to say that, Dave? Is it uh, UK or do you talk specific like England, and Scotland, and break them in yeah, different Wales? People say UK generally. Yeah, I'm not right? sure what where, what the right words are, even though we've been there. Well, yeah. Yeah. Hope mm. we didn't offend anybody. <laughs> mm. uh, Wanda and Paul's next. Oh, Nova Scotia. Oh, not having great weather in Nova Scotia today. Hmm. Oh, you just. I went past everybody yeah. all at once. There. Okay. An Angel, uh, Angela is next. We compare the shore excursions offered by the ship and several companies and things to do on our own. We try to pre book, but sometimes we had luck getting something in port. You want to move on to the next one? Oh, it's sure. hard sometimes when you have booked something that gets canceled that you're looking forward to, and then you have to scramble to replace it with your second choices for sure. Yeah, we've been really lucky. We haven't had very many canceled. I, I can think of once we had a snorkeling in Cozumel canceled, and um, it was due to just really poor weather. And we were like, oh, thank goodness you canceled it because we wouldn't have been able to swim in the weather it was too bad anyways but generally we've been pretty lucky with not having yeah, excursions canceled i am hearing of that more and more i'm not sure if the cruise lines have decided that if they don't get enough people to make it worth the while they cancel it because i hear some people have mentioned that you know it maybe it wasn't heavily booked and so they canceled it i'm not yeah. sure if they do it that way if they do that's unfortunate because right. you know, it'd be nice sure. to have a smaller group sometimes wow. yeah and peter is here from england good evening Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Yes, it's after midnight there. After so midnight. it's tomorrow. So it's Victoria Day in England. Right. Wales. UK. You want to move on to the next part of this question? Oh, Peter has a question. You keep forgetting 
Like, if you've been to a port before, do you usually stay on board or do you always get off the ship in the port? So if we've been there before and we felt like we've explored it, we'll generally just get off for a little while, you know, especially if it's uh, if it's a dock, like you don't have to take a, a tender. What's your face about? I'm just going to say, if we've been there before and we don't like it, we don't get off again. Well, that's true. <laughs> There's a few places, you know, that we're, we haven't done. But, but generally, we get off for a little while. We have been to Cozumel. I should have went and checked the spreadsheet, but I'm sure that we've been to Cozumel. It was 14 times. Yeah, I was going to say 15 times at least. And we still have yet to exhaust all the things there are to do in Cozumel. Well, they're There's... constantly changing things there, right? <laughs> yeah, so seems to be kind we've, of done, we've done some things there twice. But yeah, so so yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean if we've been to the port before we, that we don't get off there. We may just find something different in some places. You know, a good example is Le Havre. You know, we got off and we did Paris. If we had the trip there again, we probably wouldn't stay on board. We'd probably go Normandy, right? Mm -hmm. We'd go and do that. Thing. And even explore Le Havre, too. It yeah. looked like a nice place, but we didn't get time to see that because we wanted to get to Paris. Right? Yeah. yeah, for, for sure. sure. Yeah, so some places have lots to do. Mm -hmm. Some places, they're just kind of like a little shopping opportunity. Like, I think Costa Maya is kind of limited. It's, uh, just, it's a smaller port, so... It's a place we've stayed on the ship a few yeah, we, times. We've tried to extend ourselves in Costa Maya lately. We're just not having a lot of luck. So, uh, yeah, it's probably uh, stay on the ship next time, Costa Maya. Mm -hmm. Although we like to get off. You know, we're fitness buffs. You know, you see us working out all the time. So <laughs> we like to get off, stretch our legs, do a little bit of like, you know, get the cardio going. And then we get back on and have a drink. So that's usually our plan. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. James and Kimmy Cat are here. Oh, no. Kimmy had to work tonight. Oh. Kim, that work. <laughs> Let's start saving some money. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yep. Because those excursions can be expensive. They can be. Yeah, Is that a good segue? Mm, yeah, it is <laughs> so, a good segue. So you'll find that a lot of cruise lines really inflate the price of their excursions. We've noticed that some are more expensive and some are more reasonable. So sometimes it depends on the ship whether we book an excursion. Definitely. You know? I yeah. would say that for sure. There are some cruise lines that you think, wow, that's a pretty reasonable price. And then there's some more where you're like, oh my goodness, that's really expensive. And some cruise so, lines do excursions really well and are really professionally organized. And you feel like you had your value you money's worth and some feel like you, they kind of wasted your time and took a lot of your money so we've had both true. those experiences too it's true so yeah so they can be expensive and probably the biggest motivator for not booking an excursion is usually you want to save some money so the option of booking a private company you can kind of explore into your own thing and there's also the explore into your own thing and then do some like purchase a tour or do something once you get on land and find what there is to do Right. So you don't really have to have a plan. A lot of places mm -hmm. you can get off. I can't count the number of times we've got off. We just thought we'd walk around. We end up talking to a taxi driver or someone that wants to give us a tour of the, the island or town. And, you know, we give them 40 bucks and we get, a you know, an hour or two driving around, checking things out. Sometimes that's the nice way to do a stop the very first time, especially in the Caribbean. Because then the next time you come back, you know what you really want to do because you kind of had a bit of a quick little tour. Yeah, I'll say that. Like, I think back to, like, going to St. Martin, for instance. We've uh, The first time we were there, we paid for a private tour on a taxi. Or I think that we were traveling with your parents. And so the four of us went on a tour. And it was just us in the minivan, which was lovely. And we saw all kinds of different places, stopped at probably at least a half a dozen places. But then when the next time we went back, we went, well, we really wanted to go to that beach that we saw before. So let's just go to that beach. So we we like that strategy. Picture in the airplanes going over our heads. <laughs> the Maho Beach, I believe it's called. And fans in Fort Worth, Texas. Hi, David and Pamela. That's something we haven't done in a while, go to Galveston. Yeah, we used to. We've, we've done it. Quite a bit, but yeah. we haven't lately. We haven't we, since COVID. A lot of time, we used to do Calveston, middle of the winter. Galveston? 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 <laughs> what did you just say? I don't know, Galveston. Mm. We, we said we've done it sometimes in the cool weather here in Canada and surprising enough there in Galveston we've had like come back to like frosty temperatures on deck when we show up back yes. so, Making it cold yeah that, that trip across the Gulf in the winter sometimes scares us out of Galveston yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure. although we, we've had some good cruises out of there mm -hmm. and Warren is here good, good evening, evening. And Bruce and Tawny are here from North Carolina. I'm looking forward to your port wisdom. Well, I don't know. I wouldn't describe us as wise, but yeah, we are uh, maybe. Wise. I hope you're wise. Because <laughs> I'm older. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I have no nothing to say after that. I don't know what nothing to say, to say after you you're, you're wise. Bruce, yeah. Bruce is waiting for words of wisdom, and that's the best. Yeah, you can I, come up I, again, with. I don't have words of wisdom, but <laughs> you know, we do like to explore things. And I guess my biggest piece of advice. 
for when you're looking at excursions is, you know, do a little bit of research beforehand. And like one of the, I think it was Angela that commented, I always look at the sh uh, ship excursions and then from there go and see if we can do that without having to pay the ship or if there's a third party that's doing something uh, very similar. And so, yeah, I, I think the biggest way to save money is to do a little research before you went, before you go there. So, you know, before we went to Europe last year and did five weeks in Europe, I spent weeks just sort of Googling what's the best thing to do at each port of call that we went to. I didn't necessarily plan anything, but I knew, oh, and I wrote down, you know, say in La Corona, Spain, I knew that I really wanted to go to that beach that they had there. And I downloaded a, a walking map that we could go and use. So things like that, doing your research beforehand can save you a lot of money. This is where I give my public safety address, mm -hmm. where I say that if you book an excursion that is not run by the cruise line, yeah. then the cruise line will not wait for you if that excursion has a problem and you're back right. late. So that is one of the big reasons a lot of people book with the ships is for that safety of knowing that Absolutely. if something happens, the ship's not going to leave and you're not going to be waving goodbye because your private company took too long to get back. In saying that, most private companies are aware of that fear now and they are professional in making sure that they've built in time to also get back. And, and it's, it's funny because sometimes you will go to do something on an excursion and all the people from the cruise ship that did the cruise excursion are also at the same spot with you getting off the bus. Mm -hmm. Then they're getting back on their bus. You're getting your bus and you follow each other back to the ship. The difference is we paid half the price. Yeah. So that, that happens a lot. If you do a little bit of research. Yeah, so, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And Jean, is giving you some party faces <laughs> nice. celebrating the long weekend with yeah. three party faces uh -huh. and carol, hey, well, hi, carol is saying hi and from smoky oh, alberta oh, smoky alberta hopefully mm. you're safe out there in alberta mm. with all the fires yeah, that are burning for our americans that maybe don't know there's a lot of fire forest fires going on in alberta right now Mm -hmm. um, you're flying to Athens this week for a back-to-back -back on the NCL Jade that includes stops in Turkey and Israel. Any recommendations? So I went to Turkey mm, probably 13 years ago now on a on a Royal Caribbean ship with my mom. We had a stop there. Without we did, me. Yeah, Mr. Canuck wasn't with me. It was my mom and I went on this. Um, and we did emphasis. And, you know, my mom really wanted to do emphasis. And I'm like, okay, I'll do it with you. And I absolutely was blown away by the history and the beauty of it all. So emphasis for sure. Love it. I, I you know, it's um, my biggest advice is it's very hot there in the summertime. We were very hot. I couldn't believe that we had booked the excursion through the cruise ship and we had a 630 meeting time. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm on vacation and I'm, you know, meeting at 630. But I understood why because of the heat. But where we docked was also beautiful in Turkey. You could just get off and walk around and go to gorgeous shops, beaches within walking distance, restaurants, and all of that. Um, I, we've never been to Israel, so we can't comment on that. But uh, yeah, that's an exciting itinerary you're doing, though, for sure, Jamie. Hmm. I'm trying to think. I don't, off the top of my head, can't think of any cruise vloggers that we've watched that have been to Israel, so we can't even give any points that mm, way. No. Yeah. No, nope. not that we we haven't followed anybody, but that's probably because we haven't gone there, so we weren't researching it either. Jade, mm. that'll be a nice size ship too. Yeah, that is it's kind of nice similar ship. to the Dawn that we've been on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. huh. nice. When's that? This week. This week Whew. she's flying. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Ontario girl says hello. Hello. And someone here from Wisconsin. Teresa, hi. And, and Becky is, is from here from Indianapolis. Indianapolis. And uh, Peter. Peter's here with a special My next story. cruise line is with a line I've never been on before. Cruise line. Ambassador cruise ship. Ambassador. Yep. Is that not what I said? Yep. Ambience cruise to Iceland. Oh, I would I would like to do Iceland too. That would be nice too. Yeah, we've never heard of I've never heard of that cruise. Have you? So why would you want to go to Iceland that you're not like thinking Alaska is gonna be exciting? Well, no, it's not that I don't think Alaska will be sighted. I think it will be pretty. But I, I I, don't know. I've always wanted to go to Iceland. It has been a place for sure. Mm -hmm. it has the word ice in the land. <laughs> I know. Angela says frugal. 
frugal. We're not cheap, but we are frugal. There is much more to manage than making money. We have a gold Amex, but watch how we use it. Absolutely. We're the same way. I mean, you know, and we, we've had some people that have commented on watching our vlogs and say, oh, why don't you take your, your wallet out of your pocket and spend more you're on vacation? But we love to vacation a lot or crew and travel a lot. And so we don't want to blow every all of our travel monies on one seven day cruise. We want to spread it out and be gone multiple weeks. So we try to do things frugally as uh, as we can. And if you get a deal on a cruise and you bought an excursion for every port, you could get close to paying the same amount of money as you did Absolutely. for the cruise yeah. excursion. So that's yeah. a lot of extra money. Yeah. And if there's first time cruisers that are watching this, trying to figure out how to do ports and book excursions and stuff, one thing that we always run into and let them know is that you don't have to book excursions at every port. Mm -hmm. There are other options where you don't have to get off the ship. So just don't think because you have all these options put in front of you that here's what you can do when we get here. You don't have to book one of those. There's other things you can do. Yeah, it's true. We sort of ran into that for our daughter's wedding. We had a lot of first time cruisers that came with us and they were after they had made their booking and that they were furiously trying to book their excursions and they thought that's something that everybody did that everybody did booked it through the cruise line and said oh you don't have to do that we generally book one through the cruise line and then do our own at a few others just to be cost effective mainly yeah lately we've been doing a shore or a ship excursion at least once a cruise and then a few other kind of messing around yeah yeah sometimes a private excursion yeah. that sort of thing yeah brenda says good evening good evening and tanya Hello. And question from Leslie. How is how easy and safe it is to self-explore on a Caribbean itinerary? What is public transport like? So I'm going to say it depends on what Caribbean island you are going to. So if you want to, you know, give us your itinerary and message us either on Facebook or Instagram, I can I can respond to that um, in more detail. But I'll say the generally I feel very safe and it's very good. As a female, there's a few uh, ports that I wouldn't go by myself or you know my daughter and I by ourselves went shopping in St. Lucia and we decided to turn around and go back on the ship we really didn't feel safe there Jamaica is another one that I don't feel really safe at those are probably the top we, two that I'm a little leery about we got a, a funny story about Jamaica we were getting off we had booked a private excursion for a tour mm -hmm. and I believe we were in Montego Bay we were and we were walking out of the cruise port and they had advised kind of generally if you do not walk out of the cruise port and walk to town it's dangerous they literally said do not do this it's dangerous mm -hmm. but we had to walk out towards the cruise port to get our private ride to get into town right a van full of crew stopped pulled over and they say get into the van with us do not walk any further because you will end up in trouble so so there's the when people say that to you you know how dangerous it can be that the crew wouldn't let us go in now we had we explained that our ride is just a little bit ahead On we're the gonna other side of the gate yeah we so land we, we, right but yeah so that gives you a, a bit of a feeling though is when the crew knows it's that dangerous and won't doesn't want their you know their their passengers in harm's way you know there's got to be a real risk so. and the other place i'll say too that i didn't mention is nassau and we were actually on a cruise ship going into nassau um in bahamas and the and the captain came on and said that the u.s government at that time had put out a warning for safety for American tourists and that for you not to go and self-explore at this port of call to only leave on, on a supervised uh, tour. So yeah, yeah, that's another place that I would say be careful too. Then on the flip side, we were in Aruba one time. We were dropped off from an excursion. We decided not to go with the excursion back to the ship. We stayed on the beach and we walked out past all the hotels. We went out to a public road and we ran into a, uh, a lady that was coming off shift from working at the hotel mm -hmm. and we saw public buses going by and we asked her if she could help us figure this out so she helped us and we we got on paid our way and for yeah. and you, if you do that you can do a really really frugally because you <laughs> cost can, us two dollars like two dollars for us to get back to the ship on public transportation it dropped yeah. us off in the main part of town that we just walked to the right ship across the street so the ship. if you find islands that you can do that in there's some huge savings in just hopping on the public transportation if you know a little bit of you know spanish is always helpful in the caribbean yeah, that's sometimes sure. a language barrier is the, the biggest hurdle but, but yeah i'll say there are certain islands that are really safe and certain ones that are not so safe so it, it depends on what where you're um where you're going exactly and how many are with you right like if you're yeah. a solo person then you know but if you got a, a group of people then it gets safe right so 
yeah. travel in packs. For sure. And even just two girls, like two women, like like I said, my 20-something-year-old daughter and I went shopping and we were like, ooh, we should have brought my husband or, or my adult son with us because I we I felt like we were being targeted because we were two women by ourselves. Mm -hmm. Jean from Illinois says she just booked the Enchanted Princess for February 24. Oh. Yeah, we hope to do that this week as well. <laughs> is it the is it February six? Because if so, you're on a group cruise. And yeah, maybe exactly. You don't know. <laughs> yeah, that is when our group cruise is February twenty four on the Enchan Enchanted. But yeah, yeah, on, on uh, the sixth. Yeah, departing on the sixth. Yeah, it's a ten day. So mm -hmm. if that's your cruise, you're on our cruise. So yeah, mm. we talk like we own the cruise. Yeah, right. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Uh, Lori is saying she's doing a rainforest excursion in San Juan. Oh, that's it. That's uh, that will be fun. We've watched other vloggers that have done that. It looks like it would be a good time. Yeah, and, and we've seen that like ships do that, I believe. But you can also get private companies do that now as well. Mm -hmm. That they're branching out and doing kind of like eco type of tours. Uh, I would describe them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, to the rainforest. Mm -hmm. And Big J thirty three is going to be on the Emerald ah, Princess, the very first princess ship we've ever been on. Yeah. was the Emerald. Mm -hmm. Have a great time. Nice. Yep. And Wade is heading to Edinburgh in a couple of weeks on the dawn. Oh, have two teens in tow, tow with us. What do you recommend? To mm. Edinburgh. We didn't mm. go to Edinburgh. We didn't. We were on the other side of Scotland, I mm -hmm. believe. Yeah. But you want to talk about safe places to just go and do whatever you want. And we've never come across friendlier people than Scotland. People literally stopped us on the side of the street and said, are you here on the cruise ship? And we said, yes. And they're like, oh, we think you should go do this. And if you go that way, you're going to find this. And over here, and they were telling us all the things about their communities. They were just so proud of where they were. We had a great time in Scotland. So I'm sure you'll have lots of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Do they like golfing? Go to St. Andrews. <laughs> yeah. That's all you want to do. <laughs> Yes. yes, the home of golf. Yes. No, we had fun. We had a great lunch and met some local people in yeah. a very local pub there. And, the, you know, there's, um, lo there's lots of good videos and vlogs about uh, Edinburgh that I have watched. You know, I believe there's a big castle there that overlooks the city. There's all kinds yes. of historic. So there's there's things to do. We've never personally done it, no. but there's probably lots of things that you could do as a family. I'm I sure. know we had looked at researching doing hop on, hop off bus there just yeah. because there was a lot of different places that we, we thought if we made our way there, that's what we would do at least the first time to get a, a better feel. Steve just booked Conningsdam. October 7th to Hawaii, 17 days of pure bliss. Oh, wow. So I, I hope you just checked out our suitcase diaries with um, Ken because that's the exact uh, itinerary that he did. Well, he did. Yeah, did he, he did 17 too, didn't he? Yeah. 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 So you're probably doing five over there, five back, six there, six, yeah. and Victoria thrown in. Yeah, yeah. That's, what, that's what Ken did. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And wow. it, was, it was interesting to talk to Ken about that because we asked him about the long number of sea days to get there and come back and was it worth it for the few days and why. And he said it definitely was because, and he said something that really hit home for me. He said that it took five days just to get into cruise mode. And for those of you that have cruised a lot, you know that's the case because it's like you get on, you're on a cruise ship, you're excited, and then kind of there's this awkward period where you have to kind of get out of that working Work life mode. and then and all of a sudden you, you're in cruise mode and you're five days in and then all of a sudden the the tags show up for your luggage and it's like oh no i'm just enjoying my cruise well going to hawaii you get that out of the way in the first five days yeah. and then vacation mode starts in hawaii yeah. and then you sit back and and the excitement of being in hawaii yeah. and all of that yeah, yeah for sure so yeah it's a it's a nice nice itinerary from what i've heard yeah ken, yeah. yeah i mean by the end of talking to ken it's like okay let's book it mr Nick, i want to do that too <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you didn't see the suitcase diaries that came out on Thursday with Ken, definitely because that's that's your cruise. He's yeah, talking about that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And Dave's telling me how to say it, right? Dave says England. I say England. UK is okay. Okay. We like to keep the Scots up north. <laughs> <laughs> he says, however, Scotland is beautiful. And and the people are extremely kind and friendly. See, that's what yeah. our experience was. And it's too. foggy and it rains. Yeah. <laughs> we went there. It's one of the few times we ever went on a vacation somewhere where we weren't disappointed to see foggy and rain. Because yeah. we thought that feels like what we always thought Scotland would be. <laughs> so we got it. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. We had um we went into a local shop where I bought the um, fascinator that I wore to my daughter's wedding when we were in, in Scotland. Anyways, the man that owned the shop that was helping me pick that out, he said, oh, I'm so sorry that it's raining today on your day here. And I said, no, I'm actually happy. I 
<laughs> because when you picture Scotland, you think you should have a little bit of misty, wet drizzle. And it wasn't like coming down poor. It was just enough you needed to have an umbrella with you. So it just sort of fulfilled the picture of what yeah. I thought Scotland should be. And so Scotland is a, a really good example of a port we came into. And I forget the name of the port now. It wasn't, uh, it was just the port city. It wasn't the big. Mm -hmm. what the you, had, you could have taken the train into um, Not well, Edinburgh, the Glasgow. Other one. Glasgow. But it was we didn't. just a train ride. So we, we thought about it. We literally got off. We just started walking around. We just we just said, what is there? To, so we started walking. We started reading plaques and looking into the old buildings. We started seeing some interesting history. And we found a little map of things, to, like yeah. a little walking tour you could do there. Yeah, we came across this this little fire department that opened their doors up for people to come in the public and make donations and see the history of their little fire department and what they did during the war. And, and, and it was fascinating. Phenomenal. Yeah. yeah like we out, really out, of the, enjoyed it. out of nowhere, we went to a beautiful little pub and it was an old hotel that had been done up in a pub and uh, yeah. it was all locals in there. And they, I think they all thought we were really strange in there with our vlogging cameras and trying to figure out what to eat. Or... They were laughing at us trying to figure out the procedure of how to order, how to order. and what you do because Cause... they don't have waitresses that come to the table. You go to the bar and you order your food. Yeah. 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 And then we went from there. We walked over and we came across the mall. We walked through there to a pound store and checked out all the different chocolate and treats. We walked, I bought a dress in that one. Yeah, you bought a dress. <laughs> we walked down some old streets. You bought a fascinator. We poked our head in a couple of pubs. Like we literally just walked around with no plan and we had a great day and felt like we, we, we felt like we really kind of got a feeling of the culture and what it was all about. Yeah. Even though we didn't do any of the excursion, you know, we didn't do a a day in we Scotland. Went to a or, beautiful yeah. park. Remember yeah. that park was yeah. there? Oh, yeah. The park that overlooked the, the town. The whole town. Yeah. yeah. You had to go up all these steps to get to it. It was beautiful. And sometimes we do something like that. That can be so rewarding. And it didn't cost you a dime. And you really felt like you got to know the place mm -hmm. and the people. So mm -hmm. that was a good example of being able to do that. And and I feel that some of these ports where you stop in little towns, you know, another one was Cove in Ireland. Oh, yeah. A lot of people got on there and they went to Blarney Castle and they went off and did excursions. We just walked through this cutest little town you ever saw, and I would do it all over again. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. So you can kind of make your own fun. It doesn't cost you anything. Or or the way, I guess the way to put it is it might cost you something, but you don't mind stopping and having a little meal at a local restaurant or mm -hmm. buying some smoked salmon down at the wharf. Or, yeah, like, you can spend some money when you're doing things on your own, and you don't feel bad because you know you didn't pay all big bucks to go anywhere and do anything. Yeah. You can kind of, and that contributes more to the local economy than giving all your money to a cruise ship. To the cruise ship. You know, as much as the cruise companies wouldn't like me saying that, probably, that's the truth, is you're actually giving it to people that work there, all of it. The cruise doesn't get any cut of that at all. That's all their mm -hmm. money, which I feel good about, too. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, sure. yeah. If you want to support the you're little support, town. Supporting the local community, for yeah. sure. Yeah, so we always feel good about that. Falmouth. Oh, there you go. Here's a, a question. What are the tips for Falmouth? So they do have a very nice shopping, enclosed cruise port shopping area that has... Um, like it's done up and relatively new and very clean and that sort of thing. Lots of lots of different jewelry stores. Actually, uh, I before we went to Falmouth, I had lost the diamond out of my engagement ring and we replaced it right there in Falmouth because we had a, got a really good deal for it. So if you are looking for jewelry, that's um, a decent place for it. But we've never gone outside of that area, have we? No, we've been there a couple of times now. And both times we were so impressed with the area. It was a big kind of wide open shopping area. There was music playing there was little food vendors there was even a i think there's a margaritaville in there somewhere there's also like a craft market where local people come in and, and sell things that they've made and created so yeah yeah so we really didn't go anywhere than this the shopping area we, we stretched our legs the ship's parked right beside there it's really close there's no real hard sell pressure like we found in other parts of Jamaica because it's kind of that closed shopping area, which is mm -hmm. nice. Now, from there, you can do other things. So people can still go to, like, I believe, Dunn's River yes. Falls from there. Mm -hmm. You can go book and go to, like, a resort-style beach and spend an afternoon on the beach. So there are things to do from there. We've just mm -hmm. never done them yet because no. we, we found in Jamaica, in the, in the bigger part of Jamaica, there is a lot of, you know, really pushy vendors is the way I would more so than other islands mm -hmm. so we just kind of we've stayed in the shopping area in Falmouth because we, we liked it so much it was clean it was well done yeah yeah so we sorry so we can't really give you so, any we looked at excursions through the cruise ship and uh yeah we just decided to stay local so mm -hmm. we don't have a whole lot of yeah so experience so if you want to know where to go buy diamonds in Falmouth we know that <laughs> <laughs> actually I think we bought Julia there twice we did. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Two different times, two different pieces of jewelry. So yeah. there you go. Yeah. Maybe I need to get us back there. 
I don't think I've had jewelry <laughs> bought for me since. <laughs> Avoiding fall moon. <laughs> and Dave is up next with, he says we should do a whole evening of just the Sky Princess. No mm -hmm. other ship is worth talking about as much. <laughs> well, maybe, we're going to see, because I would maybe the Sun Princess might be worth talking about mm -hmm. as much. We'll see how that one plays out. Mm -hmm. We are desperately trying to clean up our calendar to figure out how we get on that Sun Princess. Mm -hmm. And we would love to get on it before it comes to North America and be able to show everybody in North America what it's like before it comes over. That's the dream. We're not sure if we're going to make it happen. Yeah, we're trying to figure out scheduling and stuff like that for that. Exactly. For yeah, sure. if we, we hit the lottery, we're definitely going. Mm. So we'll see. <laughs> Nancy's talking about sloths. One of your favorite topics. Can you scroll on the screen that I, I can read? sure do that. Yes. <laughs> Nancy says, I want to see the sloths while in Montego Bay. Mahogany Bay. Ma sorry, Mahogany Bay. Should I do an $89 carnival excursion or book third party? We booked third party, had a wonderful experience. Um, we booked it through them. Um, and then they gave us email they, you didn't pay for We didn't prepay for it. Nope. We just reserved it. And they said they would be uh, waiting for us outside of the gates of where the cruise ships are. And they gave us a very, um, very detailed instructions as to where to walk to and meet them. And we walked to where they told us to. There was somebody there with a big sign. They put us in their um, shuttle vans that hold probably a dozen people. They were clean. They were new. They had a tour guide with us for the ride to get to the Sloth Reserve that talked about the history of, of Rotan. It was very detailed. We were very impressed with it. I would highly recommend it. Yeah, maybe reach out to us offline here because I can't remember the name of the company at the top, man. Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, I should. I should have. We, we took 40 people to it, and I would say... I don't know. Everybody loved it. Everybody loved it. Everybody. Everybody told us it was the highlight of all the excursions they did on that cruise. Yeah. So, um, and for those that are a little. So reserve, a Sloth Thomas Sloth Reserve? Jimmy something. I don't oh, know. Oh, man. What it is. We have all the details. So, yeah. So, you, look it up you could you. pay for Carnival, but it's very easy. It's a short excursion. There's no risk you're going to miss the ship. You'll get back in time to even do some beach time if you do the private one as well. And. It's less than half that price yeah. of what you just said, $89 yeah, carnival we are, we are around $25 a person. No, it's 30 something a person. We was paid. it? 30 something a person. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. I'm That's the one that paid it. So. <laughs> and so, yeah. So you can do it yourself. Have just as good a time. You know, the exact same spot, the carnival party. Take. There is a couple different places. I guess I should say that. I do know there's a couple. There are more than one sloth yeah. reserve there. So it depends, I guess, if you want to go to a specific one. Mm -hmm. Something hangout. Does that help you with the name of it? Yeah, Tom. I thought Thomas is hangout. I don't know. We're getting we'll, closer. We'll we'll get there. <laughs> of course, as soon as we turn off the camera tonight, we'll remember it. But again, message us and we'll we'll forward you the details. Captain Ahab wants to know if he's late, but he wants to know if you've ever been recognized in foreign ports. In foreign ports, no. Where is Captain Ahab? We haven't been recognized in foreign ports. No. Um, well, it depends what you describe as foreign ports. Okay. We were, well, we were walking through the shopping area of St. Thomas. Yes. And we had someone walk by us. And also we could hear them as they went past us saying, that was the cruising Canucks. And all of a sudden we turned around and they turned around to see if I guess we heard them. And then we talked to them. Actually, a couple from BC. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, like when we were in Europe, nobody recognized us. If that's what you're asking, that's what I was thinking when, when we thought of foreign yeah. ports. Nobody in Europe. No. I don't think anybody that like is, is from the ports rat either. We haven't had anybody that's at a port that knows us. No. I don't think so. Nope. No. Nope. Just the people on the ship usually. James and Kimmy Cat, or just Kimmy James? Kimmy Cats likes to get off the ship and at least take pictures. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, we always try to get off for a little bit unless it's been a place that we've done multiple, multiple times. Nancy's saying something about... I just answered the question, so you can move on oh, to the next I? one. That's what she's saying. Carol's talking about your train. Took the train to Alaska. Very beautiful, very informative on the history of the gold rush. They stopped at the Canadian border where they came aboard and checked our passports. Oh, yeah, I heard that they do that. I guess, uh, yeah, I wonder uh, what that would be like as a Canadian passport. We're just looking and then coming, turning, coming back. Hmm. We have to declare anything. Yeah, we've, Anyways. we've never cruised out of Canada, so it's going to be interesting. Yeah, for us. this will be our first cruise uh, going out of Canada. Yeah, see if we ever do it again or whether we just go elsewhere. 
Yeah. Ken told me I had to pack my patients to get on board, so I'm a little little concerned about that. Mm. <laughs> and just to follow Nancy, I finally found it. Mm. It's Daniel Johnson's Monkey and Sloth Hangout. If you Google that, you'll find the one we went to. Okay. So, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's for Nancy. There you go. There you go. Live updates. And off the Caribbean Princess, Captain off Ahab. On the Caribbean off. Princess in two weeks. Oh, on. Hope two it's weeks. not overbooked. Get Noro, safe, safe travels. travels to all. Nice. So, yeah, yeah two week Caribbean Princess, lots of pools. Yes. Love lots all the of pools. pools. Don't, lots of don't forget to find the little pool tucked in by the sanctuary. Mm. Mm -hmm. And Leslie has a question. Mm. For the Caribbean, what is the average shortest and longest time in a port you've experienced, and how long can you get on and off? How long and off, or how, how long getting off and on? Okay. So if it's tendering, it's going to take longer to get on and off. If it's docked at a, at a pier, then generally not a, a long, once you've cleared and then people just walk right off and there's no time. But tendering, you need to know that depending on the size of the cruise ship, the bigger the cruise ship, the longer the line is to get off. So we've watched some people that have logged that have been on these 6,000 passenger cruise ships and it took them till, till, um, noon to get their tender ticket called to get off whereas if you go on a smaller one like for instance when we were on new amsterdam and we needed to be tendered there was no lineup whatsoever you just uh you didn't need a tender ticket you just walked and got on a boat and left so that's something to think about if you're going on a bigger ship and you have tender ports yeah we have we have actually tendered into a port got up in the morning but one of the first ones off did our thing went swimming spent hours at the beach came back and there's still people with tickets waiting to get on waiting the tender. So that can really slow you down. Mm -hmm. Our our if you want to know about shortest, we went to Half Moon Key in March. We arrived about eight, nine o'clock in the morning. We do we had to be back on the ship at one. So that's that, the shortest. That's like three, four hours is all we had at the port. And it was a tender port on top of that. So they had to figure the tender time. So you got off, you swam real fast, and you got back on the ship. So that's probably the shortest. They started serving uh, lunch because they do a lunch on the on the uh, island. They started serving lunch at 1030 in the morning. So that's true. have been our first clue that they were going to shut things down to get us back on fast. But, Longest time in a port? Uh, probably. Well, I mean. Have we ever done overnight? We have. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we We've. We've been in a port that we were at two days, but it left port and came back. That was a carnival ship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we haven't done an overnight yet. We will be in the fall. In a couple of weeks, too. We're oh, in a couple of weeks. We'll be overnight in, wait for it, <laughs> Tampa. Tampa. <laughs> we're spending overnight in Tampa on the cruise ship. Then we catch a ball game. Oh, that's funny. But anyways, yeah, so the longest we've generally done is maybe... The, the, the majority of, the, of them are around 8 to 10 hours. Usually you arrive in the morning, leave dinner time. Yeah. And sometimes if you arrive at lunchtime, you stay into the evening. Seems to be yeah. either way about 8 hours. Usually around 8 hours. But we have had have had a few where it's been like a 12-hour stop. Yeah. Whereas our last cruise in March, they were all short stops. They you know, were. Curacao, we didn't get in until the afternoon, but we stayed late in the evening. Aruba, we were there first thing in the morning, but we let, you know, left we relatively early in the early afternoon. afternoon. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so it, it depends on the itinerary, I guess. But, yeah, we've had mm -hmm. short and we've had long. Yeah, for sure. Carol would recommend it, but would not do it again. That's the train. Oh, good. <laughs> That's not nice. <laughs> I don't like it. Oh, no. <laughs> That's about the train, right? Okay, Sandra's been oh, watching. First, first time cruiser, possibly. Been watching a while, first live. Would you recommend someone going on a first cruise to not book excursions to save money? We cruised for, I would say, at least by our first, I would almost say 10 cruises. I don't know. We we rarely booked an excursion. Like, I think I, some, well, some cruises, we didn't book any excursions. When we, our very first cruise, we booked one excursion. And the main reason why we booked it, because it was the most affordable one. So it just sort of gave us a taste of what an excursion would give us. And um, we enjoyed it. So I say... What we've done really is always booked one sort of affordable one and then gone from there. And then if there was some like had to be want to see absolutely, then we might uh, do another one. But generally, you know, see what the cruise line offers because some of them are wonderful. Some of the best excursions I've ever done has been ones that we've booked through the cruise lines. Yep. 
but then some more have been ones that some, we've some done are our worst. own. So, <laughs> and yeah, and some of them have been the worst for sure. Yeah, good thing so it's is really hard to. A lot of cruise lines with the excursions that they they allow people to do reviews. So I'd be read, read very carefully because sometimes mm -hmm. not how many stars they gave it, but read why they liked it or didn't like it because it might feed into things you like or don't like. Mm -hmm. Someone might say that oh I couldn't stand it because I took my children there and there's no other children. It was all adults. Yeah. Well, then that might be a good thing for us if we don't want to have children, right? So you have to kind of read between the lines of the reviews, but you can sometimes mm -hmm. see if they're going to be good or bad that yeah. way. But yeah, well, I agree with but you. yeah, we we definitely when we started cruising, we were trying to save as much money as we can. We didn't have drink packages. We hardly did excursions. We just went on the ship. We paid our tips, and that's all we spent money on. Yeah, and so, and we found because we were new to cruising and new to all the Caribbean islands that the most affordable way to do it was to hire a taxi and do a private taxi tour. Um, and that was a lot cheaper than booking excursions. Yeah. So we did that pretty much every every Caribbean island we've ever been to. The first time we've been there, that's what we've done to sort of get our feet wet and understand what the island's about and what we like. And then when we go back a second time, we sort of, you know, focus in on something we want to spend more time doing. Dave says what scares him is the stories of the pickpockets and the clever ways. Yes. So I see that a lot now. Mm -hmm. And definitely something to watch out for, especially in the bigger cities. Yeah, so for men with wallets, for sure, that's a risk. For women, cross-body purses, for sure. Yep. You know, my children just gave me a cross-body purse at Christmas, and so yep. I've been trying to get used to wearing that. Um, Try not to wear backpacks where all the zippers are behind you and people can come up behind you. Like, there's a whole bunch yeah. of that. Just be safe. And if, I don't want to sound paranoid because you want to kind of – meeting people from places is the interesting part but mm -hmm. be very cautious if anybody approaches you odds are if they're approaching you they might have a motive they might have a reason to distract you something might be going on so mm -hmm. if someone deliberately comes after you even if they're just offering to take a picture or all kinds of scans with different things like that just kind of avoid to be very very leery get your guard up immediately that's yeah. what i would say mm -hmm. to make sure that yeah. you know and in crowds of people you know, try to avoid that type of situation mm -hmm. so yeah, often if you go up to someone else and engage someone else in a foreign port, it's usually pretty safe because you're the one that's making the engagement. Be very aware if someone's coming and wants to talk to you, to you just mm -hmm. kind of randomly. That's a red flag, I would say. And that was sort of the feeling that I felt when I was shopping in St. Lucia. There were too many people approaching me and invading my space. But I, we had to turn around and go back to the ship. Vicky saying hi from Tampa. Hi, Vicky. Mm -hmm. We love Tampa. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to be spending two days there shortly. <laughs> Grant went on a Norwegian Fjords cruise. Oh, nice. With Cunard. Oh, wow. No. And they were there for an hour and 15 minutes late back to the ship on an excursion. The ship waited because you booked your excursion through them. So Grant has also given you a public safety announcement that yeah, if right. you book through the ship, then you're, you're going to get back on the ship. They will. And we have been on the ship where the captain has come on and told us that we are going to be departing around 30 minutes to an hour late because they had um, a short excursion that was cruise run, run that was running behind due to some sort of accident or like traffic problems stuff like that so yeah they do do that and that's the biggest advantage of booking through the cruise line for sure peter says haifa in israel often cancel for safety oh, sadly wow. so yeah you have that mm -hmm. kind of the political turmoil at peace when you get into that part of the middle east mm -hmm. and uh, cruzellus vicky saying iceland is her dream mm -hmm. yeah yep so i one day we'll get to iceland i'm sure it's in our our plans mm -hmm. Um, Bruno Flipper. Flying to the cruise is edging closer to the coast of the cruise. Cost of the cruise. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I guess I still <laughs> need my glasses. Sorry, he even enlarged the screen. The cost of the yeah, cruise. Yeah, so flying. Yeah, so we're and we're finding especially during peak times. You know, when children are out, holidays, that type of thing. Things that the flights are getting expensive. Mm -hmm. So if you can drive, you can. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're doing a lot of time trying to juggle to find the right flight. Sometimes we fly in the day after we get off the ship or two days before. If we can get the timing on the flight, you have to always remember the cost of the hotels is also a factor in flying different times. So mm -hmm. we're always doing that math. But you're right. It's getting it's getting pricey to fly. Travel mm -hmm. in general, hotels, everything feels like it's on the way up. Mm -hmm. Angela has a complicated question for you. Question, what's your favorite excursion? What, what port was there? Oh, I have two. So whatever one you say, I'll say the other one. Oh, I don't know if I could narrow it down to two. I think I've got three at the top of my head real, really quickly. 
Mm, okay, my first one that I'm going to say is a place that we often now don't even get off the ship, but one of the best excursions we ever did, we booked privately, was through Belize, and we did a rainforest where we went and hiked through the rainforest, got on these tubes and went through the caves in these tubes. And then from there, we did zip lining. And we did that with three teenagers and we just had a blast. Lunch was included. It was so much fun. And an interesting point about that, we booked that with a private company. And what was interesting about that is all the cruise lines do the same excursion. But with the private company, we went farther up the river and started farther up. We had a longer ride because we were at the private company. And they yeah. showed us where the cruise passengers were getting in for their excursion, which was partway Less down. than half of what we did. So, we, so, yeah, that was a phenomenal excursion. One of my favorites. I get one of my other favorite ones would be Grand Cayman and doing the stingrays. You're saying none of the ones I was thinking. I know. <laughs> but I love water. So, yeah, the stingrays, we, we loved it so much. We've done it twice. Uh, we loved the one in Belize so much that we did it twice. So I guess that should be the, the goal. If you do something twice, we know we like it. So what's yours? Well, if I get to say two, I'm going to go with Norwegian booked excursion with the cruise line to Florence, Italy. That was going to be my third one. Yes. Yeah. That was phenomenal. Norwegian did it right. They did. They, everything was fantastic. We really appreciated how they ran their excursion. It was professional. There was no time frames were followed. We were dropped off in a good part of town. Everything that it said in the itinerary was happened and, and it exceeded our expectations. The other one is a place we've only ever been once and you've rarely seen on a cruise. Maybe if you're going out to Galveston, you'll see it once in a while. And that is into Progresso. Mm. And from there, we went to Chicken Itza. So the Mayan ruins. Yeah. Has to, yeah, Mayan. And, uh, yeah, that was that was phenomenal too. It was we you know, booked that through a cruise ship. Cruise ship that was kind of yeah. one, one of the wonder, wonders of the world. It was it still sticks in my mind like like it was yesterday, but it was one of our first cruises. Yeah, it really was. It was the first cruise we ever took our children on. Actually, our kids mm -hmm. were young, and they still talk about it today. Yeah. So yeah, oh, I like I like that memory. That's a good one. Good job. Yeah. Um, you don't want to know how much you spend while in port while cruising in Europe. Hmm. It really well, depended on the port. Yeah, but in, in saying that, for those that want to kind of do their own thing and wander around and just buy things, stop at restaurants, have some a glass of wine, have a sample of the food in the local ports, we found Europe probably the most affordable of anywhere that we've been. We were amazed at how inexpensive it was. We didn't spend a lot. There was times we got off them for 20 euros. We were eating lobster and having sangrias. And It's true. Like, yeah, it, yeah. We were, were we in Spain where yeah. we did that? Like, it was beautiful. That's true. And yet, there were some days that were really expensive. Amsterdam was probably one of the most expensive days we had in our Europe trip. And that's because we were docked over an hour away from the actual city of Amsterdam. And there was no real good way to get there. So you had to take a taxi, which was extremely expensive. And then we took an Uber back. But we spent more money on transportation, getting in and out of the city that day than we did on any other port and but that, and that, yeah that's the wild card in, in europe is sometimes you're in a downtown which is really nice and then sometimes you're in an industrial area and the transportation costs are expensive yeah so yeah so yeah so it, in europe it, it really averaged a lot there was days we spent hundreds of euros there was days we spent dozens of euros and we had a good time true so, true yeah. yeah so yeah it's really and i mean i maybe we're not great with the whole bookkeeping part of that fun stuff for us because I don't think we really sort of recorded what we spent each day, but I do know there were days where it was a lot more than others. <laughs> You're laughing at a question. What is I'm lost at Jean's comment here. We had to bring Jean up to speed. Okay. Because Jean is saying that really, she said about booking the Enchanted Princess in February, 2024, she says hers is also on the 6th and it's for 10 days. Well, we will see you, Jean. <laughs> and you'll see all of our followers, Jean. We'll be there. So uh, you obviously are, uh, you, you, <laughs> we have organized a group cruise. We've got almost 40 people coming. A lot of them are probably on this live tonight and mm -hmm. others are on our Facebook group and follow us on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, we are doing a Cruising Connects group cruise. So there'll be a whole bunch of including us there on February 6th for 10 days. Yeah. It's a great itinerary. You made a good choice. It looks like a great <laughs> ship, so good choice. Yeah. And we're going to be there. Good choice. We are. We're going to be there. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, you're going to be able to, yeah. And so we're organizing some activities uh, on board for the group cruise. 
And so, Gene, if you want to be part of the whole group cruise, just let us know, um, cruisingconnects.ca. You'll see some information there and let us know. And we'll put you on the list of people that are going to be part of the group cruise. Yeah. Yeah. And you can. We'll I just be... spent the morning planning a bunch of stuff for that today, but we'll announce that later, guys. Yeah. So, um, and you don't have to book through us. So, whoever you've already booked through, Gene, you can still be part of the group. So, yeah. Yeah. It's her fiance's first cruise. Oh, wow. Her 15th. Oh. And she hopes to say hello. There you go. Yeah, you definitely can. Yep. Sure. Look forward to meeting you. And Daniel's here, disguising it at Alice Caster. Can you scroll oh, up on you my can't screen? see Daniel's we comment. See there it is, Alice and I. Next cruise, January twenty fourth. Oh. The soft experience that we saw in our vlog, Sky Princess. Rob and oh, Jan. Wow. <laughs> oh, you just kind of just hit you. Yeah, I, I was just because you're talking and I'm reading at the same time. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sure you'll love the sloths. It was so much fun. <laughs> Um, Rob and Jan are just saying, yeah, getting into cruise mode takes a few days. That's why they like doing back-to-backs. That was my biggest enjoyment of doing back-to-backs out of uh, Dover in England was the nine days was kind of a nice warm-up. And then everybody else was getting off the ship and I was getting to stay on. It was really exciting to kind of still be in cruise mode and just keep going. So, yeah. Can you scroll up for me, please? I can scroll up for you. Yes. Okay. How's that? We'll go to Jean again. <laughs> Jean. Also, we love Alaska. I did yep. a land is that, am I reading the right one? Yeah, you will love Alaska, she says. Oh, you will love Alaska. I did a land cruise tour a few years ago. I'm more of a beach person, but I'll definitely go back to Alaska when my fiancé retires. Oh, wow. Nice. I'm going I'm to hit a couple of questions fast because we're running out of time. Oh, so okay. No go long, ahead. No long words. Okay. Greg is oh. up next. Want to know if we ever take a cruise out of San Francisco? We, oh, <laughs> tell them. Short answers. Oh, sorry. We haven't. <laughs> no, we haven't. We've been to San Francisco, but we didn't cruise out of there. We waved as the cruises left us on land. <laughs> uh, looking for more questions before I get out here. Uh, what are your thoughts on hibachi steakhouses on cruise ships? Is that, uh, are we talking like the... Is that um, like uh, Tapanaki? The, the Brazilian? I'm not sure. Oh, oh maybe it's the Brazilian. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've had, we've had really good experiences on in with them, and then we had one that wasn't so good. Yeah. Our last one wasn't so good. Generally good. Mm -hmm. Jim, what's your favorite color? Blue. <laughs> Blue, is it? Mm -hmm. Do you know my favorite color? From Toronto, taking the Sky Princess to North Cape. Any recommendations? I'm not sure I've been to North Cape. I'm not sure what North Cape is. I don't either. Is that like Cape Breton Island? Are we talking like maybe I don't know. Nova Scotia? I'm not sure. I don't know. So... Yeah, mm -hmm. if uh, North Cape, maybe North Cape is what Estava makes in Europe, because I know it's Sky Princess over in Europe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yep. And, and Nancy is saying about the sloth to social messages, so that's good. Yeah, mm -hmm. so if there's anything we didn't cover, you have questions about any excursions or ports, if we can help you, we will. So either throw them in the comment section of this video, because it'll be saved and you can watch it back, or email us, or go on our Facebook group, or YouTube. Whatever it works, Instagram, we usually answer everybody if they ask questions. So we're more than happy to help out. Mm -hmm. That's all. We've got a busy week ahead of us. Some videos coming out, some announcements next weekend, a cruise right after that. Yes. So it's going to get crazy. So we're going to enjoy our one last day of this long weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for your great questions yes. and comments. It's, it's uh, lovely to hear about your experiences and where you're going to and traveling. And we hope everybody has great vacations. For sure. So take care, everybody, and we will see you in one more week. Yes. Okay.